Now, there are lots of reasons why the Airbus A350 is the safest plane in the world. Because it has very unique features that other airliners just don't have. And today, we're going to talk about one. See, imagine this situation. We're in a normal long-range airliner like a 777-200LR right now. We are cruising at 31,000 feet. And something that could happen now as an emergency scenario is a rapid depressurization. We can just quickly trigger that by failing different systems that do the pressurization of our cabin. For example, pressurization static port locked or pressurization controller failure. Or we could just simply fail what powers the pressurization of our airplane, and that is the engines. So right there, engine failure, not looking good at all. And we can immediately hear in our ears, our ears just popped. Why? Because the cabin altitude is increasing very quickly, as you can see. Because the engine bleeds are not able to push any more air practically into the cabin, giving us nicely pressurized air. And what's going to happen now is that we as pilots notice, oh, both engines are dead. And we can definitely feel how the cabin altitude itself increases. 6,000 feet. We can still breathe fine here. But something we would do as reasonable pilots is very quickly grab our oxygen mask right here. But what if we don't do that? Oh, oh, our cabin altitude is increasing. We're losing more and more pressure. We now have the autopilot disconnecting. Our plane is sinking. Meanwhile, our cabin altitude is increasing. The air is getting thinner and thinner with less and less oxygen, meaning we will soon have a blackout coming in if we don't put our oxygen mask on. Oh, and you can hear our ears popping. And as this plane is kind of falling out of the skies and we're not reacting, we've reached 14,000 feet of cabin altitude. That is how thin the air is in here. And that is really the limit now. At 14,000 feet, you start to lose consciousness. Hypoxia sets in. And we now, as pilots, become more and more dizzy. In fact, everyone on board gets more and more dizzy. Our cabin altitude is 25,000 feet. And we have essentially turned into a ghost plane. Oh, we were just uh, blinking here. At this point, all the passengers are doomed as well because the oxygen masks on this plane don't come out automatically. We would have to trigger them right here so that these oxygen masks do come out as you can see they're out now. And as you can see, we have become a ghost plane. Yes, in most airliners, in fact, we're stalling out right now, pilots have to react immediately when there is a loss of cabin pressurization by putting on their own masks and deploying the passenger masks. Otherwise, they will become a ghost plane indeed. And this has happened before in real life. For example, Helios Airways Flight 522, where the pressurization system of the 737 was not set up properly before takeoff. And when the plane climbed, everyone gradually passed out, with a plane essentially turning into a ghost flight. In fact, there is a ghost plane Wikipedia of something like this happening all over the world, mainly to private jet. In 2023, Virginia a Cessna Citation crash right here. The crash may have been caused by hypoxia resulting from the loss of cabin pressure, rendering the passengers and pilots unconscious. Same thing happened in 2022, Cessna 551 Citation jet. The airplane's pilot notified air traffic control about a cabin pressure malfunction shortly before passing out, where the autopilot would keep flying the airplane until it ran out of fuel and crashed into the ocean. Now, so that this doesn't happen, pilots are trained to be able to put on this oxygen mask extremely quickly. But still, this can happen if pilots don't monitor quickly enough or if something fails. What if the oxygen masks fail? Now, the good thing is that this granted very unlikely case has a very easy fix. And the A350 is among one of the only planes that actually has it. Yes, let's recreate this case in this airplane. Rapid depressurization. Let's just enable that. Let's go ahead and yes, let's go ahead and start it. And as you can see, big trouble. Once again, our cabin altitude is increasing extremely quickly. This would get our uh, ears popping. Now, in this case, we'd have some sort of other failure than the engines failing. So we wouldn't really notice it loudly. We would probably just feel it. By the way, I believe in order to just set off this failure, we could just 
you know, turn off the packs of the engine so they don't provide any air. I think that's actually enough to break our pressurization. Now, if we had this tap open right here, we would definitely be able to tell that something is odd. Our cabin altitude is increasing and increasing. But if we were on another page, for example, the engine page, we wouldn't really notice much. Yeah, let's just pretend that we have no feeling in our ears. We can't tell that we're losing oxygen in our plane. Oh, until we have got this alert right here. Cabin pressure excessive cabin altitude. And this is where our first item on the checklist is use those crew oxygen masks. But oh no, I'm too weak. I can't grab it. And so we slowly pass out. And as you can see, we're not reacting. So the airplane just showed us something interesting. Auto emergency descent. Yes, while our cabin altitude is incre increasing so quickly, we're about to pass out, the airplane automatically descends for us. Auto emergency descent engaged everybody and so what the airplane will do now is descent as quickly as possible 3,000 feet per minute is what the plane is descending at meaning it cuts the engines to idle and it will descend to as you can see 10,000 feet a very breathable altitude meanwhile big trouble now here by the way actual effects of hypoxia is not simulated but look it's still gaining and we're at 30,000 that will definitely be passing out level but this feature means now, look at our descent rate. We are descending like crazy. This feature means now that within just six to seven minutes, we can descend from 40,000 feet down to 10,000 feet, which means that after we reach 10,000 feet, we can regain consciousness. It takes a few minutes for Apoksha to really danger the brain. Uh, anyway, this easy software feature prevents the A350 from ever becoming a ghost plane. This would never happen then. Now, by the way, another airliner that has this apparently is the Airbus A220, also modern. But it's especially important that private jets have it. And some of the Dassault Falcon jets have it indeed, the automatic descend mode. After all, according to this manual right here, at 40,000 feet cruise altitude, you lose consciousness within five to 10 seconds. Very quick. Now, interestingly, on the Falcon jet, the aircraft then that makes a 90 degree turn to the left when the ADM is activated. Maybe to give the ATC a bit of a sign that something is a bit off. But yes, the Falcon Jets also have it. Anyway, we're looking great now. Our engines are working, so we're fine considering this, but we are nicely descending to 10,000 feet still. And after a while, we are gonna reach 10,000 feet. Our cabin altitude is starting to look good, look breathable. And at this point, we awaken, of course, and the plane waits for the pilots to wake up. Now, of course, this is not the only use case of this automatic descend mode. It's also to reduce the workload of the pilot in case of a cabin pressure alert, because you have to do a lot of stuff at the same time. And can you imagine being at 40,000 feet with oxygen masks on and you have to manage the autopilot to go back down? No, this greatly reduces workload on the pilots as well. So this is actually quite handy. I think every plane should have it. It's just a matter of certifying it to the FAA. And then that the software should be able to work just fine on any Airbus or Boeing. It's nice that this Eni Builds A350 for the Microsoft Flight Simulator has it. it. has more features like, I mean, we already know the bird strike failure as well. So that will have birds crash into the plane, which is unlikely to happen at 10,000 feet. Feet, to be honest. Look at that. Little bird strike action and that causes a bit of a compressor stall in the left engine. Um, and it actually completely fails the left engine as well. Not good. We could do a dual engine failure too. That would be quite lethal. Uh, that wouldn't be good. This plane has other stuff too, like medical emergency or unruly pass. Whatever that means. So let's let me see what goes on. Unruly passenger start. Okay. Simulate the an overindulgence of a passenger with free drinks. Refusing to follow crew instructions and is becoming disruptive. Hmm. Is he wearing a Burger King crown? Me, he may just be asking for water. And this is actually just a funny gimmick of this plane, because if you actually go into the cabin, which we can do right here, unlock the door, we can see the unruly passenger, and he's not wearing a crown. Hello, sir. You have a little you had a, you've had a little bit too much of the Eni Builds juice. You know that's a funny little detail. He's like he's uh he's mad. I think this is what they do in real life. They just actually restrain you with um tape, genuinely. I mean, what else are you supposed to do at 40,000 feet? What happens if you go for a medical emergency? Simulate an in-cabin emergency. Let's do it. Captain, we have a passenger looking unwell. 
pale, sweating, and reporting feeling lightheaded. Let's see, we can check him out as well, or her, doesn't matter. Uh-oh, we've got multiple people there. Now, hello there, people. Why are there only like five people in our cabin? And they're all distressed. As you can see, we've got a pale lady right here having an in-flight emergency. Why does she have food? I don't know. She's got an oxygen mask right here for extra oxygen. Hello there. Uh... But yeah, this is really just a gimmick. You would now then do decisions on a diversion. Anyway, this is the Indie Builds A350 with some sort of new failure systems that I kind of want to see. I like having these kind of things to play around in the Microsoft Flight Sim so we could see what airplanes are capable of doing in real life. So everybody, don't lose your consciousness and thank you for watching this video and see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, that dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.